Not too good with numbers, call it math anxiety. But the answer to this problem, PhD. I didn't need a pencil and paper or a fancy calculator. I knew right from the start I could do this one in my heart. One man, two wooden beams, three nails. Perfectly, you put them all together, changed my life forever. One man, two wooden beams, three nails, now and eternally. Please, forgiveness, times infinity. One plus two plus three equals love. That there's one equation I can always make sense of How a heart full of a million sins Is cancelled out by none The Father knew full substitution Was the only right solution His mercy multiplied Jesus gave His life for mine One man, two wooden beams up perfectly, you put them all together, it changed my life forever, one man, two wooden beams, three nails, now and eternally, please forgiveness, times infinity, one plus two plus three equals love to me. The pieces of my heart Some parts and made me whole One man, two wooden beams, three nails Added up perfectly You put them all together you Changed my life forever One man, two wooden beams, three nails Added up perfectly Forgiveness times infinity equals love to me. song had a little kick with it. You know what I'm saying? I 
the music, and uh, I like that. Uh, I like that uh, upbeat tempo sometimes. Amen. You all do too, don't you? Yeah, I know. I know some of you do because when they play Rocky Top, you can't hardly stand yourself, can you? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. You know, it's funny. A lot of times we we look at things in one way. We look at it and say, I just don't understand why people get happy in church or get excited. And then we get in, uh, involved in other things in life and we... We get so excited, we look like we're, well, we look a little crazy sometimes, don't we? And, uh, amen. And, and some of y'all might say, well, preacher, why would you mention that? Well, I've seen some of the videos I took when my children were playing sports, and you can't hear the crowd, all you hear is me hollering when they're running down the field for a touchdown or, or doing a cheer, I, you know, and I'm thinking, boy, I was louder than I thought I was, Amen. Amen. I'm going to read this morning in Philippians chapter number 3. And I want you to pray for me for just a few minutes this morning. It's, it is a blessing to be in church. It's good to see everybody that's here this morning. And I trust and pray that the Lord will just open up our hearts. Heaven is open this morning. And there's plenty coming down from heaven. Uh, there's always, God is always sending uh, down his blessings, he's always sending down his word, his power, his might. Uh, I know we live in a dark world, but that don't, that don't uh, stop heaven from uh, blessing us and from uh, giving us what we need this morning. As a matter of fact, uh, heaven ought to look brighter than it's ever looked in the history of man as far as I'm concerned uh, because of, uh, of how far from God this world is in our day. And so uh, we need to look up and be looking up. And I want to I wanna use in Philippians chapter 3 a couple of verses here uh, as I uh, try to share this message this morning. So pray for me. Uh, verse number 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to preach and use for a thought this morning if God will just give me strength and, and help me for just a few minutes this morning. I want to use this for a thought Focusing on Jesus. Focusing on Jesus this morning. And, and I love this thought that, uh, uh, that Paul uh, leaves with us in the, in the book of Philippians here. And of course, it's the first Sunday of the new year. It's the first Lord's Day of the new year. And uh, you know, I, I wonder this morning if everybody in the house in this uh, assembly this morning... And if God's people around the world would focus on Jesus this new year, I wonder where we'd really end up at the end of 2018. I believe that we would be surprised and we would be uh, just overwhelmed uh, the way God can make a difference in every life, not just one or two, but in every life if we focus on Jesus uh, uh, more in 2018 than we did last year. And Paul said, look, he said, uh, he said, this one thing I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to forget those things which are behind. Uh, a lot of times we live in the past, don't we? I mean, and it's good. I'm not, I'm not ruling out uh, looking back and seeing where God's brought you from. And, I, and Paul's not talking about, uh, as a matter of fact, every time he shared his testimony, 
testimony. He wanted to talk about that road that led down to Damascus, that road that were in the middle of the day, uh, his new life began, that road where there was a, a bright light shined down from heaven, amen, and got his attention and took him to his knees, amen, and caused scales to come over his eyes for three days until the man named Ananias met him down at a street called Straight, amen, and prayed for him and laid hands on him, and the scales fell off his eyes, and then he could really focus on Jesus, amen. And he said, look, he said, there's some things in the past I, I want to forget, and, and really, I mean, if, if we ain't careful, if we let the devil, the devil is the one a lot of times that wants to bring up our past. He wants to remind us of every time we've ever failed the Lord. But the truth of the matter is, we ought to be able to get to a point that if we're focusing on Jesus this morning, even when the devil reminds us of the times in our life we failed, amen, it, it ought to bring some joy to our hearts to know that God loves us through all our faults and failures and that he has forgiven us. And listen, amen, as we sung the song a while ago, love lifting me, amen. Amen, it ought to encourage us to know, amen, that God loves us through everything we've been through, uh, through every trial we might have failed and every test we might have, have come short of what he'd want us to. Yet through all that, hallelujah to God, amen, if we'll focus on Jesus, even the things that Satan tries to use against us this morning will bring us a blessing because it'll remind us, amen, what God's really done for us us and where God really has brought us from. And Paul said, look, he said, I'm not counting as one who's apprehended. Paul had seen a lot of things in his life. He had seen thousands of people saved. He had seen people healed. He had seen people have brought back to life. He had seen, amen, the gospel being spread throughout the world at that time. He had seen how the enemy had risen up many times in his life and tried to destroy him and he said look I can tell you about a lot of things amen that God has brought me through but he said for a few minutes I want to point amen to where I'm headed amen he said forgetting those things which are behind he said I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus amen he said look the past has been good and what God has done has been great he said but I'm going towards great Greater, amen. I'm going to press towards, amen, higher things, amen. Listen, friend, amen, look, if something ain't worth fighting for, is it really worth having this morning? And Paul made it clear he was in a battle. He said, amen, at the end of his journey, he said, I fought a good fight. Amen, listen, if something's worth having, it's worth standing your ground over this morning. It's worth fighting for this morning. Hey, let me tell you the reason we have this liberty that we have this morning how to come and worship the Lord Jesus Christ is because somebody was willing to fight amen and to, and to lay their life on the line for our freedoms that we have in America amen. Listen this morning friend if you're saved by the grace of God amen look life ain't going to be easy all the time but whenever you go through what you're having to deal with and when you you got to press on towards the high mark. It's always worth it when you get there, my friends. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier getting there when you're focusing on Jesus. When you keep your eyes on the Lord, it's a lot easier getting there. Oh, I'm telling you this more. This, this, I love uh, Philippians chapter 3. I believe a, a preacher could preach a year in this one chapter. So many wonderful, beautiful things about it that, that affects us on a personal. Listen, this is, this is personal stuff this morning. Paul said, I'm going to press toward, towards the mark of the high call. And I thought about this. I thought if, if everybody would just focus on Jesus in the year 2018, 
if we had focus on Jesus. Now look, I, I want, you know, I want to share with you and just tell you this morning, amen, that, uh, amen, we shouldn't, when we come to church, we shouldn't focus on each other. Amen. We shouldn't come into this place focused on one another. We should come in here focused on Jesus this morning. Amen. And, and look, when we focus on the Lord, it, it relieves us of a lot of things that, that really that will keep us from worshiping God while we're here. I mean, uh, friends, this morning, I, I, I want to bring up a familiar story that I've talked about and others have talked about even in Sunday school lately. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, about uh, the woman that had had the issue of blood. Amen. And, and Jesus was with Jairus and, and he was going to Jairus' house and the woman that had the issue of blood was hid in the crowd. Do you remember? Uh, amen. That the woman that had the issue of blood was had it for 12 years and she had spent all her living she had on doctors. She had spent everything she had trying to get the right medicine. Uh, she, was, she was gone broke, friends. She didn't have have nothing else uh, to do. She Look, she knew that, amen, she was to a point she didn't have nowhere else to turn. And let me tell you something, friends, it ain't always bad to hit rock bottom uh, because it's our nature most of the time until we hit rock bottom, we don't know how much we just really need, amen, to focus on Jesus, amen. We don't a lot of times realize how much we really need, amen, to call on the name of the Lord until until we get in such a great need this morning. Oh, but let me tell you something. This woman had this issue of blood. Amen. But she heard Jesus was coming. And when she saw Jesus, she didn't focus on who else was in the crowd. She didn't look around to see if anybody there she knew or didn't know. And I'm sure there were several there that, that she knew. Amen. But, but she focused on Jesus because she knew. Listen what she said. And if I ain't mistaken, and it's in uh, St. Luke chapter 8. She said, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. How could anybody say such a thing that wasn't, uh, amen, wasn't focusing, wasn't keeping their eyes, wasn't just looking to the Lord and nobody else, my friends. She wasn't looking in no other direction. She was looking at Jesus. When he come, and there was a big crowd there, and she didn't get to him. It, it wasn't an easy thing to get to Jesus. I, I wonder if because of her condition, she might have been, uh, might have been camouflaged, you might say, or, or she might have been undercover in a way because a woman in her condition wasn't supposed to be in a crowd. You know that, don't you? When, they, when you've heard about this woman who had the issue of blood, she wasn't supposed to be in the crowd. She was supposed to be separated. You can find that in Leviticus chapter number 15. She was supposed to be separated from the congregation. She was supposed to not touch anything or anybody because if she did, amen, they would become unclean as she was unclean. So she was not at all supposed to be around anybody. So I wonder if she didn't maybe... Amen, man to uh, cover her head a little more than normal and maybe wear a, a shawl or whatever you might call it, clothing that disguised her that maybe people really didn't realize who she was uh, because if they really uh, knew who she was hey man, their eyes would not have been focused on Jesus but they'd been on her because of her condition. Listen friend it don't matter to me this morning hey man, it don't matter to God this morning. It shouldn't matter to anybody at church this morning who you are, where you come from, where you've been and what you've been into. What ought to matter to us this morning is that we keep our eyes on Jesus and when we keep our eyes on Jesus, God will do things you never could imagine or ever could dream of because when we focus on Him, He'll do things, amen, in our midst that when we leave, we can look back and say, only God can do something like that, my friend friends. I mean, you imagine what would have happened that day if everybody would have realized who that woman was. They would have been focused on her. They would have been saying she don't belong here. That, you, you, you know there's people that come to church that 
thinks certain people shouldn't even be in the church house. Do you know that? You say, well, preacher, why would you say that? Or how would you say that? Or why, why would you think that? Because a lot of times there'll be somebody come to church and we never take time and we'll see them and not even shake their hand and say, we're glad you're here. Not even shake their hands and say, welcome to the Lord's house. I'm glad, hallelujah, <laughs> amen, that Jesus came to seek and to save lost sinners, amen, this morning. And it don't matter, amen, where you're from. It don't matter what you got. It don't matter, amen, what's in your bank account. It don't matter, amen, uh, amen, what kind of clothes you got on. Amen, I'm telling you right now, friend, I'm so glad to know, amen, when we, amen, get our eyes on Jesus, a lot of these things that really don't matter, amen, are laid aside and we can press on towards the mark of that mark, amen, of the high calling of God this morning. We need to get our eyes fixed on Jesus. And there she pressed through the crowd. And where did everybody else have their eyes at? Yeah, they was looking at Jesus. And there Jerry, Jerry was close to him, maybe side by side. And they was walking through the crowd. And of course, we know the story. If you're a Bible reader, you know what happened. While they was walking through the crowd, Jairus was probably explaining to Jesus how long his daughter had been sick and, and maybe all the things that they had suffered through. And maybe Jesus was listening. And all at once, Jesus stopped. And everybody, you know, the, the, nobody knew why he stopped except for one person. Amen except for one person. She had her eyes on Jesus that day. And he stopped and, and he looks around and he says, somebody touched me. And, and think about the whole crowd, everybody that was there. And Jesus stops and says, somebody touched me. Oh, let me tell you something, friend. He looked at his disciples and said, who touched me? And they said, why, well, Lord, look around. There's such a big crowd. Hey, Amen. What a shame of that picture to me was is he was thronged with people, but only one person in the crowd really touched him this morning. I wonder how many of us come to church so focused on Jesus that we're going to touch him this morning, that we've come to reach, we come to press through. We come to press through whatever's been a lot. Listen, you know there's a lot of things thrown at us that, that the devil's got waiting on us right when we get to the Lord's house. He will. He'll have things waiting on you when you get to church. They'll come from every direction. Amen. I mean, he'll throw this at you and he'll throw that at you. Amen. And look, friend. Amen. If, if we would just get our eyes on Jesus, all these things. Amen. Amen. That keeps us. Amen. Or tries to hinder us or tries to get in the way of us really coming to worship God. Amen. Would we'll just vanish in our sight if we do like the woman. Amen. Who God to Jesus because she needed how to be touched by the Lord, my friends. She said, oh, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And you know, I'll, I think about her a lot, and I didn't even mean to spend this much time on this, but I'm going to hurry up and get through this. But I think about her a lot. Amen. Now, like I said, I believe she was disguised. And here she was. This little old lady didn't have much strength. Her strength was about gone. It, it took everything she had just to get to the Lord. She pressed through that crowd and, and, right, and, and she wasn't going to bother the Lord. She was just going to slip up behind him and touch the hem of his garment. She was just going, and, and to me, she sort, of, she sort of had to kneel down maybe a little bit and just touch the hem of his garment. Amen. Maybe she was waiting at the side, and, and, and maybe she was covered up, and, and, and nobody really knew who that woman was, but when Jesus walked by, she touched the hem of his garment, and then she slipped up, and oh, she had more strength then to get away, and she slipped 
went back and, and she's found her little spot. Oh, but I still believe she had to turn around and look at the one, amen, who she just touched, amen. Amen, and Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, why do you ask such a question? There's so many people here. They're bumping up against you. They're rubbing on you. They're tapping you on the shoulder. They're telling you how much they appreciate you. And he said, but somebody touched me for the virtue has gone out of my body. Amen. I'm telling you right now, I believe heaven knows every time somebody touches Jesus. I believe heaven knows every time somebody reaches out. And you know what the good thing about it is? It ain't because me and you are good and righteous and holy. Amen. It ain't because of our good deeds or our good works that gives us, amen, the right to reach out and touch the Lord. It's because the Lord left heaven and come to where we're at. It's because he said where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst this morning. I don't know about you, but the reason I love coming to church, amen, and worshiping God like I do and, and I have for 42 years is because I never leave the same way I come. And you say, preacher, how can you say that? There's no way that Jesus can be in the midst of us this morning and me and you reach out and touch him and leave the same way we come. Amen. Listen, your attitude will change. Your outlook will change. And you, the more you touch him, the more you'll want to fix your eyes on Jesus this morning, friend. I was so glad thinking about this lady thinking, I was glad nobody in that crowd probably knew who she was. Because if they had her, they'd been spread around. There she is. Don't get next to her. They would have been avoiding her more than they would have been looking at Jesus when they come by. Because she was waiting. And there'd been a commotion. And there and there'd been, listen, there's a lot of commotions, amen, that, that goes on, amen, in the worship service. There's a lot of things. If you ain't careful, that old devil will c c cause a commotion in your mind. He'll cause a commotion, amen, in your heart. I, I mean, look, friend, the, the de since you made it to church, the main thing the devil wants to do is, is, is to try to do something that you won't focus on the reason that the Lord's people have gathered in the Lord's house this this morning, friend. And boy, he said, somebody's touched me. And you know, you think about it. He didn't ask that woman a thing. He didn't ask her to say a thing. He didn't ask her to testify. He just said, somebody touched me. And the virtue has gone out of my body. And the Bible says, and the woman spoke. She come back. <laughs> I just love that picture. Here, here this woman come back, and, and people started looking around. Jesus said, somebody, and here this woman come back looking to Jesus. She, she, didn't, she didn't care. I, mean, I wonder if she didn't throw her, throw her, uh, I didn't, or, or camouflage her, amen, or what she is. I wonder if she didn't throw it back and say, Lord, it's me. It was me. And I wonder if people around, amen, that maybe didn't know her, been around her in the past, looked at her, and maybe didn't realize exactly who it was, amen, and she spoke a little clearer. Her voice wasn't weak anymore. Her eyes were brighter. She, she had a little more strength. And she come back and she said, Lord, I spent all my living on the doctors. I spent all my hope, amen, on the, on the medicines. And Lord, I knew if I just touched the hem of your garment, I knew I'd be made whole this morning. And Jesus... He didn't condemn her. He didn't say, he didn't say woman, why did, why'd you hide yourself in this crowd? She did. Is there any question that she didn't hide herself in that crowd? She didn't belong there. It was against the, the Levitical law. 
He didn't say, woman, why did you hide yourself for? He didn't say, woman, why didn't you wait till we was out of this crowd and you come to... No. No, he said, go in peace. Go in peace. Thy faith hath made thee whole. You go in peace. And, uh, and he, didn't, he didn't say nothing else. And he started walking towards Jairus' house. Ain't that a beautiful story? How everybody had their eyes focused on Jesus. Oh, I'm telling you this morning, what a great time. What a great place. What a great atmosphere to be in every church building in America today. If everybody that came to the house of God this morning truly came to focus on Jesus for just a little bit. You all remember, a bunch of you all won't. But do you all remember when we used to have antennas for our TVs? Do you all remember that? You remember what they used to call rabbit ears? Rabbit ears. <laughs> rabbit ears is them t antennas you put on top of your TV and you moved them. You know why you moved them? You lost focus. You couldn't see the picture real good. I remember we had this antenna outside and it was cold like it is today. Now things were different for kids then than they are now. I'm on, I want you all, you youngins, to know this. When you was watching TV now and you something's wrong, Mama, Daddy, something's wrong with the TV. No. That ain't the way it was then. When the TV got blurry, it was sun. You go outside in the cold weather and turn that antenna till I say stop. <laughs> Boy, amen. And I say, no, I say, it'll get better, Daddy. Said, no, it ain't going to get better. Yeah, I put my shoes on. I go outside around the back of the house. And there was the antenna and the living room window was right here. My daddy had the curtain and he'd say, turn it a little more. And it seemed like when you touched it, it got better picture. When you let go, it got blurry. Y'all remember any of that stuff? But anyway, he'd say, turn it a little more. He'd say, daddy, he'd say, okay, it's good, come back in. And boy, you'd go back in and, and everybody, everything was focused again. Hey Amen. Look, let me tell you something, friends. Hey Amen. Our faith can get just turned a little bit in the wrong direction sometimes where, hey Amen, the image of Jesus just ain't clear as it ought to be. Hey Amen. But I'm telling you right now, hey Amen, if we'll just, hey Amen, reach out and touch the one that touched us when we needed him the most, we can still get back to Jesus in focus like he once was in our our lives and we can get our eyes back on the one that makes life a lot easier to live my friends everybody's saying happy new year you really want to have a happy new year keep your eyes on Jesus focus in on him a little bit more Paul said look don't worry about what's in the past don't let Satan weary you and drag you and get you down with what's past now I'm coming to the latter end of the message here and I want you to get this the latter part of the message I want to read this to you it's a beautiful scripture it's in Hebrews it's in chapter number 12 it's in verse number 1 I've got a few to hit right here just bear with me and listen and listen and let God adjust your antenna this morning it says in Hebrews chapter 12, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. You know what those weights are? Those weights are things in the past that Satan keeps reminding me and you of that men you need to lay aside because God has already forgiven you and they've been cast away as far as the east is from the west this morning, friends. Lay aside that weight. And I've heard people say, well, if so-and-so shows up for church, I ain't staying. I've heard that. 
You know what you need to do? You need to forgive your brother and your sister. And whether they ever ask you to, uh, 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 to forgive them or not, or whether they ever, ever say I'm sorry or not, if you think they've done you wrong, you, to, you need to just go ahead and forgive them and tell God that you forgive them. And, tell, and, and friends, Satan can't use that against you. Amen. I've said it like this a many a times. Amen. Look, Jesus raised the dead. He, he healed the lame. He, he caused the blind to see. And the one that was going to betray him and sell him for 30 pieces of silver was right in the midst of every service he had, my friends. Judas Iscariot was right in the crowd. He was part of the number of the 12. And Jesus didn't let that keep him from doing what his father sent him to do. Amen. And let me tell you something, friend. They ain't none of us ever been done like Jesus has been done by his own disciples by the one that sold him for 30 uh, pieces of silver, by his own people. The Bible says he came into his own and his own received him not. Ain't none of us ever been treated like that. It's funny. People that ain't, ain't right with God, you, I, you can go to Walmart. I can as a preacher. I'll go to Walmart. You ha- Ain't seen somebody in church for a while. And boy, they just run, hey, preacher, how you doing? I'm fine, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine too. Well, oh, I've been missing you at church. Well, oh, I, yeah, kid's sick and a car broke down and, and I've been sick. But I'm going to be back. I'll be back, preacher. Good to see you. <clears throat> I really don't know if them people really saved or not. Because they'll lie to you to your face, won't they? But then you'll see somebody that's got a little conviction about them at, at Walmart, and they'll see you, and they'll sort of just turn. I hope, and I hope they didn't see me. There's a preacher. I'll go down this law. And they'll walk over here, <laughs> and they'll turn down the aisle, and there they'll be right there. Well, hey, how you doing? Oh, hi, preacher. I didn't see you. <laughs> and you shake hands and say, well, I've been missing you at church, and you know what most of them will do? It's got some conviction, Bobby. They'll drop their head. And they'll say, well, I really don't have an excuse, preacher. Just pray for me. You know what? At least they got some conviction about them. At least it shows. Them ones that saved, boy, when they ain't right with God, they see a preacher, they'll run the other way. Amen. They will. They'll run the other way. I mean, look... He said, lay aside every weight and every sin that do us so easily. Easily. It don't take much to beset us. It don't take much to get in our eyes off Jesus. Uh, Satan's got a lot of things in the world for us to look at. Amen. But listen, he said, wherefore being compassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let's lay aside every weight and every sin that do us so easily beset us. What does it say in verse 2? Everybody ought to know this one. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, How could you endure such a cross and say that there's joy in front of that? Because he knew when he got through the cross, he was going to get to where me and you are. And for the joy of knowing that there would be people on the other side of the cross that would accept him as their Savior, it was worth the fight, my friend. It was worth the battle for Jesus. It was worth going through the cross to get to me And to get to you this morning, you ever thought about it like that? It was worth getting through it. My daddy told me, he said, son, he said, I was on the front lines in the Sahara Desert in World War II. And he said, I fought as hard as I could fight. And he said, we fought that desert fox they called that German general on that day. I can't remember his name, 
but we fought that desert fox all the way to the Mediterranean, and they went to Sicily. And we went to Sicily, and he says, Son, I fought as hard as I could fight. And we got Sicily back, and they went to Italy, and we went to Italy, and he said, he said I fought as hard as I could fight. And if you all think it's cold right now, and it is, I think it's cold too. My daddy told me that his, ever, the army he was in, I can't remember what it was called then, the, the, uh, the army, it was, it was uh, General Patton's army, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he said they spent three months in the Andes Mountains. Three months. And he said it was so cold that, uh, that they wanted to build a fire, but if they lit a, a, a match, the, the German snipers used that fire to point them out to shoot them. And they spent three months in the open in the mountains of Italy. But you know what he told me? He said, son, I didn't, I couldn't leave. You know why he said, son, I couldn't leave? He said, because we had to defeat the German, we had to defeat the enemy. He said, there was one thing I couldn't do till the enemy was defeated. He said, I couldn't go home. He said, I wanted to go home. He said, I kept fighting because I wanted to go home. I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but I want to go home, don't you? I mean, I, I want to keep my eyes on Jesus. I want to be focused on the Lord because one of these days I'm pressing towards that high mark. Amen, I'm pressing towards the prize. I'm pressing towards the high call. I've done been called into his family, but one of these days I'm going to be called into a better country, my friends. He said, son, he said, I fought as hard as I could. He said, because I wanted to go back home. I wanted to go back home. <laughs> he despised the shame. He sat down at the right hand of God. He said, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Now let me read a little bit more over here in the, in the further part of this chapter. He said this. He said for, in verse number 18, he said, for you are not come unto the mount that might be touched, that burned with fire, or into blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the, the, the words should not be spoken to them anymore. Remember at Mount Sinai? Remember the children of Israel? Remember God speaking to them and they audibly heard his voice and they said, Moses, go up and talk to God for us and come back and tell us what he said. We can't, it scares us to hear his voice. Let me tell you something, friend. When we get in the house of God and the presence of God gets in this place, amen, we ought to be at peace with God. And if you're not at peace with God, if there's a fear that comes over you, you need the Lord this morning, friend. God wants you to be at peace with Him. You need to focus on the Lord. He said in verse number 21, And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But look what he said in verse 22. But you are come unto Mount Sinai, unto the city of the living God, unto the heavenly Jerusalem and into a, into an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to the and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel amen look what he said friend amen he said look we we're not going to focus on the past. We're not going to focus on Mount Sinai. We're going to focus on Mount Zion. And in the midst of Mount Zion is the Lamb of God. Amen. That takes away the sins of the world. In the midst of Mount Zion is the Lamb of God that feeds His children this
this morning, He feeds them and He leads them. I'm telling you right now, if we re- when we leave here in just a few minutes, if we really came to worship, we're going to get a glimpse of Jesus while we're here. If we came to worship. I don't know what you've got so far. I don't know what you've saw. I don't know what, what you felt. I don't know what... What you even come for. But I know this. Heaven this morning is open for business. And He wants us to focus on things above, not on things below. And He wants us to focus on that heavenly Jerusalem and not the things this world's got to offer. And He wants us to focus on the Lamb of God, amen, that's going to see us through the year 2018, amen, and help us this year that we can be a greater light for Him than we've ever been, that the church, amen, can be a brighter light in the history of the world than it's ever been, my friends. You remember when Stephen was being stoned to death? You remember that? When Stephen had preached to them Jesus Christ and him crucified? You remember what happened as the stones was hitting his body and he was taking his last few breaths? What did he focus on? He was dying. He was being murdered. He was being slain. He was a martyr for Jesus. In other words, he gave his physical life because he stood with Jesus. And as he was dying, the Bible says they looked upon him and what? When they looked at his face, what did they see an image of? It said his face shone like an angel. (laughs) here he was being stoned to death and his face began to glow like an angel and the Bible says he looked up and what did he see he said I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God and he looked back down he got focused on Jesus he's got his eyes on Jesus and he looked back down and he said Father forgive them forgive them Amen. Even as they stoned him to death, he was praying for them. Why? Because he got his eyes on Jesus, my friends. Boy, you're talking about having church. you talking about having prayer meeting. you talking about having a shouting, singing in the choir. you talking about the preacher getting excited about preaching the Word of God. Amen. You talking about things in the house of God going smooth when we get our eyes on things above, when we get our eyes on the one that gave us everything we've got, when we focus on Jesus and see how much clear it is, amen, that the Lord and the way, and he said, look, I am the way, the truth, and the lie. Look, it gets a lot more clear when we focus on him this morning friends now I'm coming to a close Paul said Paul said I press towards the mark for the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus listen Some people feel like they're being robbed because they come to church. There are some people come to church, they feel like they have to be here. I mean, ain't that such a shame? That you just say, well, I got to go to church tomorrow, tomorrow, Sunday. Well, if I wasn't Sunday, I'd get my boat out. Ain't nobody going to get their boat out today, are they? Well, I beg your pardon on the way over Solway Bridge. Guess what? I looked I look down there on the river and guess what I seen? Somebody sure does like fishing a whole lot. Two of them in that boat. (laughs) 
<laughs> if, if, I, if it wasn't Sunday. Boy, I'd like to ride to the mountains. I bet they're pretty up there. Up there at uh, Mount Leconte and up there Kingdom's Dawn. I bet they snow up there, Bobby. If it wasn't Sunday. Well, I'd just get in my car and I'd drive up there to Kingdom's Dawn and I'd see a little snow. After complaining how cold it is, then we want to see snow, don't we? <laughs> we, boy, we, we? Look, when you feel like you have to be here, oh, Lord, preacher, hurry up. I'm ready to get this service over. It's time to go home and eat, eat some lunch. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to have today. I remember I was preaching one night in the revival and the singers had just got up and sung and they done good singing. Lord, they done good. I prayed for them and they sung good and I said, bless them, Lord, help them. And they sung and they sat down and I got up to preaching. <laughs> I love their honesty anyway. I got up and I was preaching away and I was preaching and while I was preaching, I said, some of y'all are more worried about eating supper than you are seeing somebody saved tonight. I said, what a shame. We come to church, doesn't come this far, and we're more worried about what we're going to eat in a minute than we are being at church. I love those, those people's honesty. They come up to me after church, and guess what they is talking about when I said that? Them singers that I just prayed and said, bless them, Lord. Pour it on them, Lord. Hey, Lord, just open up heaven and, and anoint them, Lord. And I was preaching, and they was out there, where are we going to go, Shawnee's or Cracker Barrel or... And they come up and said, Preacher, I want to apologize. Ain't that good? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I want to apologize. I thought, I thought more of them after that than I did while they're singing, to be honest. I was, they was honest. They had conviction about them. I wonder how many of us this year, and you can get ready to sing. I wonder how many of us knows we need to get focused, more focused on Jesus. You know, almost every message I preach, I don't look out and say, this needs to, that needs to. Every, every, every time I preach a message with, with this kind of conviction, I'm the one that wants to come and pray, Bobby, because I want to. I want to be more focused. On Jesus in 2018. I don't want weights to slow me down. I don't want sin. I like what I I like what I read this week. Somebody made a statement. Somebody made a statement that said this. What if you hated your own sin like you hate everybody else's sin? Some of y'all didn't get that. I'm gonna say it again. What if you hated your own sin? like you hate everybody else's sin. You say, what do you mean by that, preacher? You know how much it bothers you when you see other people doing wrong? Most time, pick up the phone. It bothers you that bad. Why don't it bother me and you about our wrongs, about our sins? Why don't that bother us? It was worth getting through the crowd. It was worth getting down low. It was worth, it was worth, it was worth coming to the Lord. It was worth touching the hem of his garment. You know why? She had her eyes focused on one person. You want our children to do better? I believe if they see us doing better, what they'd do better. You want our children to be prior warriors when they grow up? Then why ain't me and you being prior warriors in front of them? You want our children to worship God and not be ashamed? Then why don't me and you worship God this year unashamed? Let them know. I'm going to focus on Jesus. I'm going to focus on the Lord. We're going to stand. We're going to sing this morning.